welcome back to another discography review here upon the old YouTube channel. Today we are going to be looking at a band that is often claimed as the greatest rock and roll outfit of all time, and that is The Beatles. A pretty wicked band that is for sure in my top 20 favorites of all time. Love The Beatles quite a bit, lots of great albums and songs. So it should be a very positive and great discography review. So with all the bullshit out of the way, let's get straight into it. So in 1963, the Beatles released their first album, Please Please Me. And uh, out of the whole teeny bopper era, Beatles era, that first period of the Beatles before they went psychedelic, this would probably be my second favorite record within that whole uh, camp. And I think this is a pretty solid and strong debut album, in my opinion. You know, some of the standouts to me are Twist and Shout, Love That Song to Death. And, you know, I saw her standing there, Love Me Do, Baby It's You. The title track is really cool. Chains is another cool song. So many really wicked and awesome, you know, catchy pop songs that the Beatles wrote, you know. Pretty groundbreaking for the time since the Beatles pretty much skyrocketed to fame as soon as this pretty much came out and they were on the Ed Sullivan show. So, you know... Pretty strong debut to a pretty strong band, in my opinion. So that is going to be it for Please Please Me. They followed Please Please Me up with with the Beatles in the next year, I believe, 64. And uh, this is probably my least favorite out of the whole Teeny Bopper Beatles era. The only song I really care to listen to off of here is All My Lovin', although they do a cool cover of uh, Roll Over Beethoven. But, uh, you know, other than that, there's not really anything that stands out to me here. This is definitely not a bad album or the weird, worst Beatles album by any means. I think this is a highly enjoyable album that some people would probably like a little bit uh, more than me. Just out of this whole era of the Beatles, I like some of the other albums just a little bit more. So that's going to be it for With the Beatles. The next album they came out was A Hard Day's Night, and I like A Hard Day's Night quite a bit. There's some pretty cool tunes on here. Uh, my three favorites off of this album would definitely be the title track. Really love the title track. And my other two favorites would be And I Love Her and Any Time At All. Other than that, there's not really any songs that, like, grab, grab my attention. This is, this would definitely be a very enjoyable album to listen to in the background, like I was doing with most of these, uh, albums for discography reviews, while also, you know, paying close attention to while doing other things, but you know, if this was just on the background, I would be having a very fun time with this album, and even pretty much the same thing with, uh, with the Beatles and some of these other earlier Beatles albums, but you know, I prefer the mid-era of the Beatles as opposed to later Beatles or earlier Beatles, if that makes any sense, so that's gonna be it for A Hard Day's Night, another pretty enjoyable teeny bopper Beatles album. The next album, Beatles for Sale, I like more than A Hard Day's Night and with the Beatles, so kind of a little upcline in uh, my opinion for the Beatles you know one of my favorite songs Beatles songs from this whole era is on this album rock and roll music I really love that tune quite a bit John Lennon sings it really well on there and my other two favorites would definitely be eight days a week and babies in black so you know overall pretty much what you would expect from this Beatles album pretty much has the same sound as the previous three I just think that has a little bit more engaging songs for me personally than, you know, all the rest of the Beatles album from this whole era. So that is going to be it for Beatles for Sale. Now we get to my favorite Beatles album from this whole uh, teeny bopper era and the last one from this era. And that is going to be the Help album. I really love Help quite a bit, you know, easily within my top three favorite Beatles albums for sure. I love it quite a bit. You know, my favorite Beatles song of all time is Yesterday, which is on here. You know, this is the album that definitely cemented that they were more than just a pop act. They could write a really cool, meaningful songs like Yesterday. And, you know, of course, the rest of the album is really, really fun as well with songs like the title track, Help, Dizzy Miss Lizzie, You Got to Hide Your Love Away, You're Going to Lose That Girl, Ticket to Ride. So many really cool songs on here that are some of my favorite Beatles songs, especially from this whole era of the band. So those are going to be my thoughts on Help by the Beatles. And now we get to probably my second favorite Beatles album, and that is going to be Rubber Soul. I really like Rubber Soul quite a bit. This was definitely a groundbreaking album for them, and was pretty much the start of their whole psychedelic era. I wouldn't call this a straight-ahead psychedelic album like uh, the next uh, couple of albums, but there's definitely hints of that on here. And also hints of their old uh, teeny bopper phase with some of the songs on here. So kind of a good mix of the two. 
uh, in my opinion. And I like both sounds of the Beatles quite a bit, so, you know, definitely an enjoyable album for me. They get the best of both worlds, if that makes sense. But, you know, you have In My Life on here, which is another uh, top five Beatles song for me. And my other favorites on here would definitely be Norwegian Wood, Run For Your Life, Drive My Car, and Nowhere Man. Really love those songs quite a bit. And, you know, the whole album as a whole is pretty consistent and good start to finish, in my opinion. So, you know, pretty cool album. My thoughts on Rover Soul, good album. <laughs> and now we have pretty much their first full-on psychedelic album. Uh, I would say, and that is Revolver. And I dig Revolver quite a bit. I used to not really care for the Revolver album too much. I like some of the later Beatles albums more than this, but after listening to their discography multiple times, and then again in preparation for this video, I have to say I like Revolver a lot more than I ever have. You know, some of my favorite songs on here with that would be Eleanor Rigby. I've always liked that song quite a bit, even though I didn't really care for the rest of the album. But now the rest of the album really stands out to me. You know, you have songs like Good Day Sunshine, Tax Man, the first song on the album, For No One, Got to Get You Into My Life, even Yellow Submarines, all right, even though that's a shitty album that we'll get into later. But, you know, overall, a really strong, good psychedelic Beatles album that was definitely doing psychedelic a lot better than, you know, some of the other bands, you know. Because this came out in 66, you know, The Doors released their first album the next year in 67, another psychedelic rock band that completely shit the bed on the genre you know the beatles were doing it a lot better than a lot of the other bands you know from that time frame that were doing psychedelic in my personal opinion so you know uh revolver another classic album for sure another good one in their discography and now we get to my favorite beatles album of all time from 67 sergeant pepper's lonely hearts club band you know, obviously one of their biggest albums, most influential albums. I believe this album didn't even have a uh, number one single on it, but it still sold pretty well. And, you know, it's often revered as their best album. It always has been, in my opinion, their best album. You know, you have songs like the title track, With a Little Help from My Friends, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, Getting Better, Fixing a Hole, She's Leaving Home. Probably my favorite song on the album is When I'm 64, which is a song that I don't even think has any guitar in it at all. You know, you have A Day in the Life. You know, all the songs on here are classic, classic Beatles songs. You know, classic rock songs that are that will definitely withstand the test of time. Because the Beatles are still relevant to this day. Because they still have, you know, 27 million listeners on Spotify. So, you know, people are still big, big in the Beatles to this day. And probably always will be, you know. And this album probably always will be claimed as one of their best albums. Definitely in my book, it probably always will be. Since it is my favorite Beatles album. So those are going to be my thoughts on Sgt. Peppers. And now we get to the White Album. And I've never really liked the White Album too much. My biggest complaint is I'm not really a fan of double albums at all. A lot of double albums just feel too long to me. That's a complaint I have with albums like Use Your Illusion from Guns N' Roses, The Wall from Pink Floyd, and some of the others. The only straight-ahead double album that has really gained my respect is Physical Graffiti from Led Zeppelin. That's the only one that really feels earned. You know, the White Album is just chunk full of songs I could not give two shits about. Granted, there's still some really awesome songs on here. You know, like Birthday, Oobla Da, Dee, or however you say that one. While My Guitar Gently Weeps, Blackbird, Back in the USSR, you know, some really awesome tunes on here. And then you have some of the most, you know, odd tunes in the Beatles discography. One of the most overrated songs on here to me is Helter Skelter. I never really saw why that was one of the most iconic Beatles songs. I guess that was groundbreaking at the time because that was probably one of the heaviest songs at that time. But, you know, next year Led Zeppelin came out. And the next year after that, Black Sabbath came out. And they were, you know, obviously we're doing heavier songs that were 10 times better than Helter Skelter and a lot of the stuff the Beatles have done so you know I don't really see the appeal in that song too much and a lot of the other songs and just overall it's just an okay album you know the songs that are really good on here I like a lot more than some of my favorites from the teeny bopper era with the exception of the help album but you know just overall an okay album I probably won't ever listen to it start to finish again unless I'm doing another Beatles topic video where I want to re-listen to their whole discography, you know. So, those are going to be my thoughts on the White Album. And now we have probably the worst Beatles album, Yellow Submarine. This should have never existed. It is a terrible album, and that is all I feel about saying about this album. Moving on. Now we get to Abbey Road from 1969, the last good Beatles album in my opinion. And probably their most iconic album cover, maybe even iconic album. 
But I feel like if Come Together and Here Comes the Sun weren't on here, which are probably the Beatles' two biggest hits, or some of the two, uh, or two of the Beatles' biggest hits, this album would not be near as big. Granted, those are really, really awesome songs. I dig them quite a bit, but I like some of the other Beatles' hits a little bit more. But you know, the front half of this album is really, really solid in my opinion. The first seven or eight songs are pretty good. And my other favorites from that front half would definitely be something Maxwell Silver Hammer, Oh Darling. Even Octopus's Garden is still a pretty good tune, uh, in my opinion, even though it has a goofy title. The last half of the album doesn't really interest me. There's no really songs on the last half that grab my attention at all. You know, when I'm listening to this album, I'm listening to the first half and then cutting it out of, after uh, Here it Comes the Sun, pretty much. Or I'll pick and choose some of the songs on here to listen to. So, overall, a good half album, in my opinion. The last half, you know... Doesn't really engage me, but you know, the reason this album is so iconic and so big is because of that first half. It's so legendary and pretty damn good, in my opinion. If you release the first seven songs as an album or an EP or whatever, you probably have one of the greatest EPs of all time. But you know, for what we got for an album, definitely the last good Beatles album, I would say, in my opinion. So, those are good been my thoughts on Abbey Road. And now we have the last Beatles album, Let It Be. And those who know me know I do not care for this album at all. In my old reviews on some of my older videos and such like that, where I did talk about this album, you know, I stated that I felt like the magic is gone and they weren't really writing any good songs after Abbey Road. But to, not to my knowledge, I learned that this album was recorded before Abbey Road. So a lot of these songs were written, um, you know, before Abbey Road. But they put Abbey Road together and put it out, then, you know, put this album you know, out of that whole session period of these two albums, the song off Abbey, the songs on Abbey Road are definitely ten times better than Let It Be. So I can definitely see why they would put Abbey Road out before Let It Be. But the only song off Let It Be that I even like is the title track Let It Be. I feel like that could have been off Abbey Road and been, you know, a big hit single uh, for that album. And, you know, you know. Shelf the rest of the Let It Be songs. I mean, Let It Be isn't a terrible, terrible, terrible album, but it's not really that good of an album either. You know, the magic that one made the Beatles good is lost on this album, whether the songs were written and recorded before or after Abbey Road, in my opinion. So definitely a Beatles album I will definitely skip and probably one of the biggest disappointments in their discography, besides Yellow Submarine, of course. So those are going to be my thoughts on Let It Be. So those are my thoughts on the Beatles discography as a whole. You know, a really good discography with some really awesome songs that are some of my favorites of all time. And, you know, the Beatles would definitely be in my top 20 bands for sure. Not in my top 10 uh, necessarily, but top 20 for sure, I would think. But, you know, I would like to get y'all's thoughts on the Beatles discography. Let me know down in the comments below what some of your favorite albums and least favorite albums and, you know, all your thoughts on their discography. I'd be very interested to hear all of y'all's thoughts on this band. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the old YouTube channel. I got a lot more wicked shit coming y'all's way. And be sure to go follow me over yonder on the Instagram. That will also be linked down below. Once y'all are done watching this video, blast your favorite Beatles album like I'm going to do with some Sgt. Peppers. And then go out and kick some ass.